Halo MCC was one of the top selling games on Steam, and yet it's still pretty difficult to find matches on the MCC. Why is this? And how it all ties into Halo Infinite's future population. Well, in this video, we're going to go into all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again, giving our news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see more content like this and you like more Halo stuff and you want to stay up to date with all the news. Make sure to tap subscribe guys. Keep yourself updated with all the information going on with Halo. So oftentimes on my channel, when I find little tidbits of news and information involving Halo that don't really warrant an entire video, I use my community page here to communicate with you guys with just little tidbits of news here and there. And the cool story was that right here, MCC was one of the top selling games on Steam in 2020. So there's definitely still an interest for people to play Halo, especially on PC, which hasn't really been a thing in, you know, over a decade. But then while scrolling through the comments, like obviously we got a really great like ratio, which I appreciate all the interactions, guys. But I was reading through a lot of the comments in here and like a lot of them were positive, yes, but there were certainly some uh, negative comments in here as well. Uh, just kind of saying, you know, like, why, if it's so popular and so many people bought this game, why am I struggling to find matches within multiplayer? Well, I think there's kind of an easy, understandable explanation behind this, but it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one kind of thing. It's more of a human nature kind of reasoning behind this. For context to know how well the MCC did sell on Steam, where you can see the top selling games we here, they kind of broke them up into different sections. We have Platinum, so you have Monster Hunter, Destiny, Rainbow Six Siege, Counter-Strike, Among Us, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto V, Doom, Red, Red Dead Redemption 2, Cyberpunk, you know, really big name games out there, Fall, Fall Guys as well. Right behind them in the gold tier is the MCC. We're right up there with like Phasmophobia, which I'm sure you guys heard that game. Warframe's a really popular game. Borderlands 3, we're right up there in sales just on PC alone on Steam when it comes to people wanting to buy and experience the game. And yet it could still be a bit difficult to find matches. This is Steam charts, tracker, whatever you want to call it, whatever. Link in the description down below if, if you guys want to check out some of these things yourself. Uh, this will show you the population on Steam users alone about how many people are playing the game exactly. And so we can kind of see just over the time frames here, but pretty much there was a, we'll go for the year-long segment here. You can kind of see how the big swells correlate along with new game releases as well. So the June-July area is when Halo 3 was released on the MCC for PC. Obviously a big swell there. We had in April, we had the Halo 2 release, and in March we had Halo CE's release as well. So if you look over time, when the game first launched here on the far left side, of the screen you can see the big spike of when Halo Reach was released because that's when ultimately the highest interest in the MCC was when it first comes to PC. But if we track over say like the last week or so you can kind of see the peaks have been around about 15,000 right here, 15,000, uh, we had 17,000 on this one, 17,000 on this one for Steam users alone playing the MCC. This one's a bit of a less official number count here, but this shows you current numbers at the moment you're looking at it right now. So I'm looking at this at 145 on a Tuesday on the West Coast. So uh, not exactly peak times, but it kind of shows you the, how the population of Halo players in general is rather split. A bit more than half are playing MCC, you can see on Xbox Live and also on Steam right here the numbers and also you have the numbers of people playing Halo 5 right now at this moment. So why have such huge sales, but then a relatively lower population? I mean, 15,000 peak concurrent players is still a decent amount of people to find matches and play the game. There's still people playing it. So, you know, we're definitely not like gone completely, but not exactly, you know, up there with some of the bigger names like Call of Duty, Fortnite, Siege, and you know, all the other kind of first person shooter games out there. And I think the main reason why there are still difficulties of finding matches, especially in hardcore, is because these games are old. MCC was never really meant to bring back Halo, which I think a lot of people might have had expectations of that happening, which I think it's just kind of misleading to yourself. Even MCC's original release was really meant to be kind of just something to hold over Halo players until Halo 5's release, but we all know what happened there with the release of Halo MCC was a bit of a flop to make it an understatement there. The thing about all the current games that people are playing right now is that they're new experiences, something that people haven't played before which certainly brings in more people wanting to play it you know obviously like fortnite and you know apex have been around for a long time with relatively the same game with not a whole lot of changes there but there's still big new things happening and you know for the grand scale of things they're relatively new 
Uh, the newest game in the MCC was released in 2012. And many of these games people played when they were younger, and also they played them probably to death back then because that's when Halo was probably at its peak popularity was certain times of Halo 2 to probably Halo Reach. So people have already experienced these games. So most likely what a lot of people did is they bought the games to be able to play on PC, to probably play through the campaign, maybe a little bit of social multiplayer, maybe some hardcore to kind of remember how it was to grind out XP and stuff like that, and then realize, wow, I'm really out of shape when it comes to playing Halo. Uh, I'm just gonna go, go back to playing my other games or maybe just stick into social, MCC, or just, you know, just playing the campaign, you know, enjoying, remembering how you felt when you played those games when you were younger, and then just kind of not coming back to it. Especially with the lower barrier of entry of being at like, what, $10 per game or $40 as a grand total. And also it's been on sale quite often as well. And so I just kind of expect a lot of people, you know, the casual audience who honestly are people who don't really probably don't really care about watching YouTube videos about Halo or, you know, care to grind out the kind of games that we like. They just want to come on, play for a little bit, remember how it was to play in the days, replay the old experiences and new fidelity. And once you have that experience, you kind of experience exactly what you paid for, what you expected to pay for, and then you just kind of hop off and go back to something else you were playing. I feel like it would be a rather large ask of people to go, hey, you know that current game you're playing is getting tons of updates and you know, a lot of your friends are playing it as well, and you know, it's the current hotness, people are talking about it. Uh, stop playing that and go play these games from like 10 plus years ago. It's just... It doesn't, you know, seem to be that would create that much of a draw to playing Halo. Because you got to remember the people that you see on YouTube, they see on forums that you see just like outside of the game itself. We're dedicated fans, all right? We're the guys who just absolutely love Halo, want to see do it the best it can possibly do. You know, all we care about is Halo. We're the minority. We are. Majority of players don't read up on blog updates. They don't keep up with all the news. They just log into the game and play it. But does this mean people probably won't even care about Halo Infinite coming out? There are currently 15 million users of Xbox Game Pass right now. With how hard Microsoft is pushing Halo Infinite, you no, know, it's on the box itself when you buy an Xbox Series X. It was probably the most advertised game for the Xbox platform as well. So there's gonna be a lot of people who are at least gonna load in, play it, and understand it. And if it's a live service experience, which the Halo Infinite's building itself out to be, it will keep people probably coming back and retaining players better than say a classic game from 2010. Halo Infinite as a live service is gonna be something like the entire game as a whole, not just the multiplayer, but also the campaign as well, which sounds very exciting. And I think it's something that's always been underutilized within the Halo franchise is the campaign PVE elements of it. But having fresh new things for people to do for the casual PVE audience of Halo to just go in and hop in and give them a reason why to play beyond just the initial release is something that's going to be absolutely huge for the Halo franchise. Halo Infinite is also the most anticipated game for pretty much every poll you ever see for most anticipated game of the year. Halo Infinite's on there. People care about Halo. People want to play a new Halo experience. It's going to be six years between Halo releases. <laughs> that's a huge time and there's a lot that has changed in the gaming market as a whole because of various things that people, you know, games that come out. Uh, new marketing tactics that have happened as well since 2015 that there is certainly an audience that wants to play halo showing on steam being a top tier selling game people want halo and people want it on pc and on xbox even though right now on the mcc population can be a bit low trust me when halo infinite comes in people are going to be very excited about it people are going to want to play it. we're going to see that population boom this is probably be the most popular Halo game that's ever going to be released. Xbox and 343 are setting themselves up rather well to do just that. So the MCC was never meant to save Halo or bring it back, but Halo Infinite certainly can. If you guys like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. If you missed any content from me recently, check out the news and informational videos I have on the screen right now. I've got a link to all my news and informational videos. Be on the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.